for me, I think uh, I'm going to share about capturing uh, vocals. Uh, everyone, anyone here uh, record vocals at home? Or okay, um, it's actually not just about putting a mic up and then just if that sound is is good enough. There's a lot to it. So I'm going to just share uh, some tips. I'm not going to use slides. Um, just going to do a, a verbal uh, explanation on this. So first thing you have to know is what you're recording. Yeah, the vocal, the vocalist. How good is he or she? If, if it's yourself, you need to know how good you are. So some people think, oh, I'm the greatest singer in the world. <coughs> then, <laughs> but you must really know your strengths and weaknesses. So, that's to say. Um, so if uh, if you have an artist that's very um, uh, easily sing out of tune, uh, sings very easily out of tune, then uh, you need to actually make sure that the person actually practices a lot more before actually starting recording. Because actually, if this person can't even get a uh, simple pitch right, uh, sometimes it's very difficult to do it, uh, what we call post-production, meaning after you do record, and then you try to save that recording by adjusting the pitch and all that, it actually affects the quality of the recording, any post-processing done. So usually, the principle is to get everything right in the beginning, so that you don't uh, have to save it uh, later on. Because any processing you do to the recording will reduce the quality of the recording. And uh, so you need to get the sense of the strength and weaknesses. So maybe the singer is good at uh, maybe certain styles or and the style that you are recording may not be the strength that he or she is comfortable with and all that. You need to take that into consideration. Yeah, And then move on. The, the second thing you need to know is uh, what is your environment you're recording. So if it's a bedroom or recording studio, you need to think differently. So if it's in a bedroom, you need to sort of, uh, you can't have too much expectations, but you can still get a decent recording at home. Uh, it's not impossible. Um, you just need to be aware of a few things. One thing is your background noises. So if uh, you have a lot of background noise, for example, uh, air conditioned noise, uh, your neighbors uh, at night. So if your neighbors part, you need to find a time to record where it's quieter. So maybe in the middle of the night. Hopefully it doesn't uh, uh, sort of uh, get your neighbors to complain. Uh, and then uh, your aircon noises. So make sure that your most mics have a pickup pattern. So most mics actually have uh, what we call a heart-shaped cardio uh, pickup pattern. Um, meaning it will pick up more from the front than the back. So make sure that the back of your mic is always facing your noise source. So for example, your, your uh, air condition is very noisy. I would recommend you switch it off when you record. Uh, but sometimes maybe it's too hot. Or, okay, but uh, just make sure that your noise source is away from your mic. And the other thing is uh, acoustics. Acoustics, most bedrooms have uh, just bed and maybe cabinets and all that. Uh, so usually the acoustics in that room is not too good. Because usually acoustics we talk about in the studio is very uh, well controlled. It's designed by acoustic uh, consultant and usually um, the walls are, uh, have very, very good acoustic absorbers and uh, diffusion in, inside that room to make it uh, sound good. So uh, in the bedroom, you can still get a decent recording, but you just need to move around your bedroom. Find a spot that you think it sounds the best. Yeah, you, you need to make that judgment. Even over time, if, as you practice, <coughs> so maybe today you record this spot, save it, move your mic over the next spot, and then just keep the documentation maybe. In the future, you can think back and see eh, which spot is the best one you like the most. Uh, so that part, uh, there's a few ways to, a few tricks you can do to find the best spot. Uh, some old timers I know in the States, what they do is they take a, a, some resonant uh, drum, something that's very resonant, and they'll, they'll hit it. So like uh, maybe take a bass drum or uh, some sort of like a, maybe a percussion instrument. So you hit it until you reach, you move around the room with that, and you find a spot that sounds the most, uh, uh, has a deeper sound, has the most resonant, deeper sound, then that is the spot that you should record. At. And usually, uh, most people will say, uh, bedroom, you can't get good recordings, but I disagree because sometimes, uh, even in a good studio, you can't get good recording. 
uh, because it's actually more on the engineer than the, the person doing the recording than actually the environment. You can always compensate for your environment in some way or another. So uh, that's another thing. Uh, so next thing you must know what, what equipment and mic you have. Uh, if it's a, a cheap uh, quality one, uh, then you need to be aware of what, what its strengths and weaknesses. The mic strength and weaknesses, your audio interface strength and weaknesses, you need to know um, very clearly. For example, mics, for me, I, I think of mics as, um, how do I say that, uh, a, a, uh, like a palette of colors. Uh, different mics have different colors. So uh, for me, maybe colors is a bit uh, abstract. A lot of uh, engineers try to describe it that way. But for me, is how solid the mic picks up your sound. So uh, you can record the same person singing with different mics, if you have different mics, and you can actually compare them. Some of them will sound more solid, meaning that the vocal actually sounds like uh, um, uh, very full and solid, but the rest may sound like very airy and uh, weak. So, uh, assuming that everything else is game structure, everything is right and all that, but uh, the the sound of the mic itself, actually that part you can't really change. You can change everything else except for the solidness part. So this this will be my first criteria when I choose mic, because uh, that part you can't really change. Even with post processing, that you can sort of reduce the solidness and increase the fullness a little bit, but always at the expense of the quality of the recording. So, um, yeah, that part, uh, you need to do a lot of comparing of different mics and from then on you can hear it. This one actually has a very uh, full sound, that one has actually a very weak, uh, airy sound. So you need to know all that. And then the other thing is frequency response. Most mics have uh, uh, frequency, because meaning they pick up um, frequency, maybe one way to describe frequency is uh, um, there are many uh, frequencies even in one sound even as I speak now there is that high frequency and there's a low frequency it's all within even that the pitch is the same it, it the harmonics and the sound is, is all inside that that's that uh, sound so you need to know your mic pick up more highs more lows uh, what it does good at and uh, you, you so you compensate for example for singers usually how I pick mic is that for a singer with a very fluffy soft sound some uh, airy uh, maybe female singer, I would actually get a mic that has a stronger, uh, fuller sound to compensate. So same for, let's say, frequency, uh, she has a very high pitch, shrill voice. You don't get a mic that picks out a lot of highs because that would over uh, emphasize the brightness of her, her voice. So you need to actually find something that complements, you know, something that maybe has a better bass pickup. So it sort of sounds more balanced in that way. Uh, the other thing is mic input sensitivity. This is something that uh, is in the specs, but it's more, I would say, how sensitive the mic. So um, certain mics are very sensitive. So just by uh, even speaking, even your saliva voices and all that, um, you can actually pick up as you speak and all that, uh, a little bit of like mouth movement, even that, it actually picks it up. So uh, there's that different sensitivity and it affects uh, your recording because uh, some of these noises will get in uh, and the, it also affects the distance you can put the mic because most of, I'll, I'll explain later that you need to uh, find optimal distance between the mic and the, the source uh, most of the time most people just put up the mic and then just sing as close as to it as possible uh, but for me I would say that uh, you need to um, find the Optimal sound from uh, um, okay. Every singer actually has this. I learned from uh, a Taiwan producer that uh, I, I I had the chance to meet in the U.S. Uh, he actually uh, was recording this female singer. I forgot the name, but uh, um, the female singer is is already a bit older, so. Um, I realized that he put the mic at an angle towards the singer. Yeah, I didn't understand why, because it was a uh, very weird angle, it was like uh, very off to one side. Then I was thinking, why is he doing that? Then later he explained, as I asked him, he was saying that because as uh, most, vo uh, most humans, uh, because of the bone structure and all that, it's not perfectly symmetrical. So one side will be more resonant than the other. 
so most of us are, are, are that like, like, like that it's impossible to have a perfect uh, uh, on both sides so one side will be more resonant but as you grow older the difference becomes more pronounced so as you grow older you you sort of inside your face may be more deformed in that say, in that way so it will it will actually uh, 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 be more pronounced uh, the resonance will be better on one side so make sure that you choose the side that has the better resonance uh, for me I, I know it's my right side yeah uh, you have to try and record so you record the the singer normally uh, I mean no, uh, on the left and on the right and you compare the recordings which one uh, sounds more uh, full and more uh, actually the test would be um, in the sense more how do I say the word uh, a bit more has more frequency richness in it I think that's the best uh, way I can describe it I would like to demonstrate but uh, in, in the essence of time I think uh, in, in the it the it you can hear a sort of a richness in it and if you process both sound a lot you can hear that the one that is more resonant actually can be processed more times than the one that is uh, not as resonant so maybe this is a way to uh, for you to check which side is more resonant and sometimes some people uh, say that you can actually just feel it but not not really that accurate in my uh, uh, experience so far uh, so and then besides getting the axis uh, you need to also care about the height where you put the mic although everyone will say you just put the mic right in front of your mouth but that's not true uh, that is um, as you put the mic higher and lower the sound will actually change so as you uh, in general you put it lower you get more highs you put it higher you actually get more lows uh, although the thinking is that most of the chest voice is here so it's actually lower but in my experience so far, when I move it down, it actually picks up more height. So, uh, but there might be exceptions. I, I, it depends on the room and the, the singer. But so far, I would say 99% <coughs> of the time is lower, is picks up brighter, higher. You actually picks up more lows. Um, then the other thing is the distance. The distance from the singer to the mic is extremely important. Uh, this is where you need to find that point where uh, most of the frequencies of the voice sort of uh, congregate in that airspace because most mics don't pick up voice they pick up vibrations of the air so uh, uh, if you can get one spot where most of because uh, high frequencies actually travel at higher speed low frequencies actually at lower speed so if you can get one spot where most of the frequencies are there uh, you can actually get a very very solid recording where you can process the hell out of it and you can still sound very very good uh, <coughs> next thing you need to remember recording game this one a lot of people tends to make this mistake here uh, I came from the analog era so where I started recording when I was 14 on cassette decks all the way to uh, analog mixer boards where we actually have to um, to do a mix of many instruments together so you hear most of the recordings you hear nowadays are stereo so left and right right <coughs> so but to reach the stereo stage we have to we have many different instruments but we need to squeeze them into this stereo uh, 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 sound we actually have to do what we call mixing so in the analog time we actually have to uh, like maybe have uh, three or four people on the mixer board each person in charge of different instruments and at different time push up and push down the faders to actually mix a, a, a record when uh, after that when it's digital time it's easy every time everything's all you can automate it in the computer and all that it's very easy but I came from the era of analog and um, uh, it's about getting the loudest signal possible uh, because the noise of analog is very high so we try to get as loud as possible without distortion so that was the ultimate aim at that point of time but when we went to digital we thought that we could bring the same theory of getting the loudest sound you can above noise floor so we can get but it's wrong because uh, in digital uh, recording it's a totally different concept and it's only discovered maybe seven eight years back in the US 
So maybe there's an era, 80s, 90s, some of the recording are actually done quite badly using digital. Yeah, even in the US and U U UK. But they only discovered it recently uh, that you know there's this thing about uh, the optimal level you need to record it. Because most digital gear have what we call analog to digital conversion. So during that conversion process, the, the chip is actually, you can uh, set the chip to uh, a certain level, optimal level where it's supposed to, to uh, work at. And most of the time, this uh, is not fleshed out uh, to most consumers, so they just say, I record as loud as possible, or some people might record too soft, but the thing is, uh, there's this optimal level already set by your manufacturer, whoever you buy the audio interface. You can actually see the, the specs sometimes is, uh, I think, maximum output level and maximum input level. All this will tell you a lot about the ADDA uh, tuning. So usually they use like minus 12 or minus 18, minus 20, minus 24. So you need to know what level is been already set. Then you need to work to that level. Uh, so you need to know your gear back to the, the earlier point that you need to know your equipment. And uh, so from there you need to, uh, most of the time I would say it's safe if you don't know, you don't want to find out about the specs or your manufacturer doesn't uh, publish the specs. You record at minus 18 to minus 20, what we call DBFS. Uh, maybe do I, have, I need to show this part. Because decibel is a very elusive uh, term, there are many definitions of decibels. And uh, let me get rid of this. Uh, let's see. Okay, DBFS. So you can see. See, <coughs> okay, It's not very clear, but basically, it's the uh, meter you see in in your recording uh, software, where uh, there's always a zero point. Yeah, you can see from actually rest is very small, but uh, I can okay usually I can make it okay. So let assuming it's uh, a, a meter that has a zero and all the way down to minus uh, sixty, for example. Uh, so this is what we call a D DB full scale. Full scale is what is possible in the digital domain without clipping. That means actually don't, digital is all about values. Every point has a value. So uh, the whole range of values from zero to uh, infinity, uh, minus infinity, is uh, actually uh, has a, a certain value tag to it. So zero is the maximum possible one. You, if you exceed it, it will not capture. So zero, uh, uh, so minus 18, and I'm talking about average levels, uh, minus 18, minus 20 dBFS is average levels, not peak levels. Uh, peak levels, we will talk about maybe it to be safe, you will keep it at minus 6. Uh, peak meaning, how do I demonstrate this? Uh, let's see a piece of music. So as I play it back, you see that there's uh, this set to peak. Okay. So you can see that there's two lines moving. So I've set the level meter to peak and RMS. So what you can see uh, there's two different levels here. One is the yellow uh, one on top, and one is the thicker one below. So the below one is what we call RMS. RMS means average, average uh, uh, levels. Uh, so you want to keep this one, this track has really been mastered, so it's been like minus uh, 11 uh, average level and peak is 0 0.6 which is very high. But for any vocal recording, you want to keep it to minus 6 peak, uh, below minus 6 peak and probably <coughs> RMS is minus 18, minus 20. This will ensure that you don't, uh, what we call, clip the converters. So the AD analog to digital converters is set at that optimal level, if you go beyond it, it clips. Clip meaning it distorts the signal, so it, it makes your sound less clear. Uh, most of the time, we, we didn't know that because it still sounds okay. Because this kind of clipping is not the 
it's the distortion that uh, you hear very obviously like as you blast your speaker too loud that kind of distortion is not that clear it is a bit more uh, subtle and you, you need years of uh, training to be able to hear that little bit of uh, uh, distortion so without that you need to just rely on your levels you need to get your <coughs> levels right yeah. uh, okay then actually lastly there's one more thing you need to take note of is the monitor mix you hear the artist hears on the headphones when they're recording so most of the time people just say ah, as long as you can hear can really. and some people like to think, turn it up very loud there's two problems to that one is that uh, when it's too loud unless you have a very good pair of headphones it will actually leak into your recording and actually what happens is what you're singing and the music itself actually will cause what we call phase cancellation meaning uh, it will cancel off some of the frequencies that is, is present in the, your recording so uh, it's better to set the, the levels right and also uh, the other problem that I was saying if it's too loud most singers tend to sing a bit sharp uh, and some singers might even sing flat so it's, it's not that good a judgement so you need to be at the right level and need to be able for the artist to hear himself or herself and also uh, the instruments of the, the music yeah. but maybe certain instruments more, certain instruments less depend on the artist's preference uh, but most of the time I would say bass is a very important uh, tool most sing good singers listen to the bass rather than uh, uh, other instruments most of the time uh, most of the, if those singers listen to bass, their pitch is usually quite okay. Yeah. Uh, then lastly, I would say uh, need to make the artist feel comfortable. Those are very simple. Uh, without getting into the very advanced, uh, uh, try to make the singer perform even better. And usually, uh, the first or second take is always the better take. You, in my experience so far, uh, I would say first and second is always the best thing. Because as you drag on, the singer gets tired. Unless it's a very well-trained singer. Uh, but even that, I think usually by the 10th take, you can hear the voice already halfway gone. And you, you will not be able to get a good quality recording that way. Uh, I think for me, that's, uh, that's about it for the tips part. And I uh, hope to share more with you in the future. And that's all. Thank you.